So we got a wheelbarrow for a project now. I mean, we just keep moving on and on and on, keeping ourselves busy. Whenever we have time off of work, we're not working. We're trying to find something new to, to uh, restore. We noticed that somebody threw this old wheelbarrow out, actually called us to haul it off to the scrapyard. And of course, I don't believe in throwing anything that could be reused away. Uh, so it can be recycled and uh, sent back to us at triple the price from another country uh, Melted down. So uh, I'd rather keep what we have and see if we can restore it. So what do we have here? We have a Jackson brand uh, commercial grade or contractors grade. I think this is a six cubic yard uh, Wheelbarrow and it's got uh, It's got the reason we know it's six cubic foot is because sevens and eight cubic foot, seven cubic foot and eight cubic foot usually today come with dual wheels. I know in the older days they probably had a seven cubic foot wheelbarrow a little bit bigger and it came with um, it came with uh, one wheel one wheel but a, but it was a bigger bigger uh, storage space it was a bigger usable space a bigger tub. Um, we know the measurement here approximately across is about 25, 20, 25 inches. We know it's about 35 to 36 inches this way. That makes it about 6 cubic foot. So this is a standard uh, older fashioned wheelbarrow because it's all steel. There's, there's no plastic involved here. And that's appealing because today everything is made out of plastic and it's meant to just throw in the garbage and start over and buy another one even if they cost two hundred dollars or a hundred and a half the modern day equivalent the, of this from the same company is about a hundred forty hundred fifty bucks depending on where you buy it from but the steel is a lot thinner it is it's and, not an older thicker steel and, I, and I'm assuming that this was made out of uh, a different grade steel and so we got we took all of our bolts off of it and it, they throw them away because you know the handles get rotten most people don't know that you can go to Home, Home Depot or Lowe's or this was a Lowe's wheelbarrow I believe probably one of their first um, you uh, you could buy the handles for nineteen dollars a piece um, sometimes you can get them cheaper than that thirty five dollars for a pair of two and they're made out of uh, a hardwood uh, something called cottonwood or they could be made out of oak or something else something equivalent to what a shovel handle is made out of and uh, I think it's just a dried hard wood and it just really doesn't hold up to the elements very well unless it's sealed we're gonna recondition this thing fully not just with new handles repainting it too yeah we're gonna bl we're gonna not blast it I think we're gonna we're gonna um, I think we're gonna wire wheel it down and we're gonna throw some implement paint on it and we're still deciding on colors. I could go with the original Lowe's blue, uh, which looks like a Ford blue, Ford tractor blue. But I think we might actually go with something a little different. <laughs> stick, a, stick around to the end, you'll find out. Yeah, stick around to the end. <laughs> subscribe to the, to the, to the, to the channel. You know, that. none of our stuff is scripted. Uh, we find out, you find out when we find out. So we have no real rust on this bucket here. It's been wire wheeled and de-rusted pretty easy. Some of them have big holes in them and stuff like that, and they're really not good for much. But this one's pretty, pretty thick, and it has no dents in it, which tells me it's a thicker gauge metal than what they sell you today. That's what the old handles were made out of. Yeah, and so this is what's left of the old handles. For, the, for those of you who need a reference guide to what these handles are, we've taken a measurement before and I think they are exactly five foot long based on what they sell today and there's two different types of handle one is a little bit weaker and skinnier for a lighter duty wheelbarrow and one is a heavier duty grade and your standard size diameter square until it tapers to a handle at the end is I think roughly two inches or slightly down from there. So mm, inch and seven eighths maybe. About an inch and seven eighths square. 
So square to square, inch and seven eighths. We are keeping this intact as much as possible as a guide reference right here. Because any handle that we buy or make, we're going to have to drill our own holes. We're not lucky enough to get a full length handle to see to see where the the wheel is in relation to the bucket. But we'll do our best to find out based on other models uh, if we can find one. Maybe we can go off of, get a rough estimate that, that a bolt was going through here at one time. And this might be where it start. I think that since they're all set lengths, we wouldn't have much of a problem fitting. Oh, I don't as, know. I mean, as long as we know that that bolt to this bolt is a certain fixed length, and then we mimic that, mimic that with the other side, and that attaches to this point right here yeah, that's on just the bottom. Yeah, that's just a bracket brace. But the problem comes in where this bracket brace, of course, when it was dilapidated and pulled apart, it was it was bent. Oh, I see. So we can straighten that out pretty easy and paint these brackets. Sand them down real quick, wire wheel them down to the metal, paint them with an implement paint with a hardener in them, and we can come up with a color scheme. This bottom bracket brace piece is not in bad shape. No, it's not. Uh, Jackson. Yep, Jackson. Brand. Yep. And it looks like it just clipped in one side and screwed in another. You know, this might not be that old of a wheelbarrow, but it'll be a free free one to paint it to our liking and be able to be used around the yard. Leftover supplies that otherwise would just rot away in the weather. Well, either that or we ship it overseas, like I said, and they sell it back to us for triple or quadruple the price. Other people might have and a cheap, supplies and a cheaper in a cheaper form. Right. You know, Russia made the best steel besides the United States at one time. And now we don't hardly do any steel production. Russia still does steel production, but we got some kind of conflict always. And now we get our steel from China. And some of that comes to the point where you can't even hardly weld some of it because it's 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 there's so much junk mixed in it that you can't tell what's what and you don't know what welding rod to even use on it yeah what size is it eight by 4.8 by 4 by 8 yeah okay so 8 is the diameter of the rim what 4 is the thickness it's thin yeah got it so so it's got a tube in it we could put some air in it and find out if it holds air if not otherwise the tires the tire would hold up for a wheelbarrow tire, even with a little dry rod on it, as long as it has a tube in it. Right. All right. Good enough. Look at this. It just comes right apart on me. <laughs> oh, that's that's because that right. studded in there. We need to keep it like that so we can get a good measurement. we got to mimic that on both sides. Gotcha. No problem. All right, so we didn't really waste any time. Looks like we got our little parts off here. Pile right there. Tire. As you can see, it's a, a, a wheel with just a bushing. It needs a little grease on the axle. Uh, rim needs to be cleaned up and painted. And let me show you one of my secrets. This is what I use to prep the paint. This is Zep Industrial Purple Degreaser. It's not the same as Purple Power from the dollar store. This is much stronger. In fact, it's very corrosive to aluminum. So use that with caution around aluminum. Don't let it sit on aluminum for any length of time but steel works great so what I do is I prep like you can see on a grinding wheel here you see the grinding wheel on this big old outdated uh, DA grinder we have a really harsh wire wheel so we're going at this rough metal and we got a little paint left over here still now, yeah so we're gonna do this whole thing over front uh, front inside and and the back side the, the bottom side and we decided to go with uh, red, white, and yellow, which is all international harvester colors. So we're going to go red bucket, red hard parts, IH white, which is an off-white, so sort of a cream colored rim dish. And we're going to go with yellow handles. Uh, and all of this is implement tractor supply paint. Um, I'm promoting no... Uh, no uh, companies. I don't get paid to do that. This is 
our projects this is what we do but I've been doing this uh, for more than 20 years I've been using this as a prep to paint because it cleans off light surface rust so after this is ground down pretty good and then we go after the hard parts with a, a lighter softer wheel that's more of a cone shaped um, and we go after these parts because that's, this is a little bit too abrasive the wheel on here is a little bit too abrasive for these lighter parts so when we get to the lighter parts we're going to use a cone wire wheel wire wheel them all down set all this up by tomorrow in the daylight we should have a medium to low humidity all these parts will be washed with a brush and this stuff and it won't be left on there to dry it'll be on there long enough sprayed on there dry without the metal being wet first it'll eat at the remaining surface rust and then give us a fully degreased surface to paint on without the paint peeling as long as this is washed off thoroughly and then it's dried and after that we should have no problems we were originally going to try to restore John Deere's name and do this thing John Deere paint green the, and yellow paint the, paint the rim John Deere yellow paint the bucket green paint the hard parts green and uh... handle yellow I guess also yeah maybe paint the handles yellow and have a big put a big John Deere sticker where <laughs> Jackson was but uh... I don't think we're going to revive John Deere's name right now because we don't have the paint to do that on hand. We're just doing this with the stuff that we have in the garage and since we have an international harvester, an international cub, uh, we have the paint for that. So that's what we're going to do. So let's get to going. Starting with the rim first, it's the easy part. Obviously, we just cleaned it with a degreaser. De um, there was some parts that needed to be sanded lightly. The idea is not to take too much paint off if you don't have to. And the purpose behind that is to keep its protected layer. Some people think you need to strip parts like this down to the metal. It's just simply not. Uh, not necessary especially if um, you're going to just do a quick restoration of something that needs to be painted some people may want to make a template I don't find that necessary I say just deflate the tire on the rim and shove the tape underneath the rim behind the tire between the tire and the rim under the bead like that and just push it down in there and that should give you what you're looking for and then cover it up like this it goes a lot faster than it looks uh, I'm sure there are other ways to do this but this is easiest for me it's made cheaper I don't know All right. So you heat this. Here you go, cameraman. You see that? A circle. Keep it hot. Nozzle in this can is not the best been used and hasn't been blown out. Okay, rattle can, tack coat, blow dry. From a high distance. Oh, I could do so much better of a job if I didn't have the top stopping up on me. All right, so we just painted. Paint's not dry yet. 
Another thing you might want to know. Little secret. Take your tape off before it's dry. Go ahead. Finished on the rest of the way now. Why? So that way it doesn't bond the whole duct tape on? No. So that your tape doesn't... And I got one little piece with it in right there. We got a little overspray. A little xylene and a rag will wipe that off. Yeah. So what's the point of that? The point of taking the tape off before it's dry is so that you don't actually take the tape off and rip a paint line and start your paint ripping midi uh, midway through the drying process. Oh, okay. Or you don't leave what's called a rough edge on the paint job. Like a paint line that's real rough, the paint's still relatively soft so it will feather itself in. Got it. Understand? Yeah, it'll level itself. Right. And that's the idea of taking paint off before paint is dry. Tape off, I mean. Change of plans. <clears throat> we went with the IH white. For some reason, the rattle can decided to spit out a little bit of pink. That's not the natural color of IH white. I don't know if this camera's picking it up, but from the human eye, it is a little bit of pink. Well, last night I thought it was the LEDs, and LEDs throw off a false reality in color because they're from a blue light spectrum. But um, this is not from the light bulb. This is natural sunlight and it is pink and it will not dry no matter how long it sits in the sun to its natural cream colored white. So <clears throat> with all that said, what we're gonna do is we're gonna paint these red <clears throat> and we're gonna switch the color scheme. Red. It's already been painted once so it should go on pretty well, huh? Yeah, just a light coat of red over this. And after we do some red, IH red, then we're going to paint the body. We figure red is a little bit too much of a feminine color, and I don't take this the wrong way for offended people, <clears throat> but it's a little bit too much of a uh, non-industrial color. So we're going to paint this IH yellow, uh, which is a construction grade color. Uh, and so we're going to paint all this yellow, and there's the main body. As you can see, it's being sun dried. And that's after two coats of power clean. Not or, power clean. Sorry, zip. zip. Not power clean. Zip. Yeah, power clean doesn't have the power to take some of this rust off. Took it down to the bare steel. Some of it. Most of it's to the bare steel. The little bit of rust that's left, the surface rust. We'll get painted over and etched in pretty well. Uh, I've used implement paint before and it's meant to be painted over uh, tractors and stuff that have been sitting in the field for years. So we're gonna find out how this comes out. But anyway, this is the prep work. And we gotta let it dry out a little bit more in the sun with natural sunlight hitting it. If we wanted to artificially dry it, we could heat it, but- uh, It's a big surface. Yeah, we, we, have, we have the day. We're going to paint this outdoors just like this and we're going to let gnats, flies, whatever land on it and then uh, those will rub off after the fact. One thing in paint, your first reaction when you paint something and you get a bug stuck to it, the first thing you want to do is remove it while the paint's wet. Don't. Leave it. Um, deal with it afterward. All like right. a buffing machine? Yeah, I mean that's generally for automotive what you do is lightly sand that spot and then you buff it in. But uh, if, if a big old fly or, or a bee or something lands in it and it starts tossing and turning and interrupting the paint, that's a different story. Even that still could be handled after it's dried with some, you know, 1,000 grit. And uh, we're not going to focus that much on that because this is not, this is an industrial job. And this is just to have a functioning wheelbarrow that's restored back to factory condition and or better. Uh, we're going to put a little bit thicker paint than what the factory used. And we're going to use implement paint that's probably stronger than what they put on thicker. Uh, okay. Alright, so we're waiting on paint to dry. That's unfortunately the worst part about doing a project is waiting for paint to dry. So, suggestion, don't wait for the paint to dry. 
find something else to do. Obviously we left this in one piece, bolted together tight, and we sprayed it. We sprayed it once, we sprayed it twice, gnats came and attacked it. Gnats came and attacked the bucket on the, on the underside, and they also attacked the front side of it. So what did we do? We waited for it to dry a little bit. We have a hardener mixed in the paint. We took a paintbrush, dry bristle brush, very light, and we knocked the gnats off. Now the gnats are off. We took it underneath the carport and we stuck a fan going and we painted it again. And then we turned the fan on right after. And so now it's set to dry where it sits until it's done. And it's not the best paint job in the world, but for being outdoors and painting outdoors like this, this is what you get. And it's a DeWalt yellow almost. Well, it's IH yellow, so DeWalt stole it from International. Yeah. Um, so this is International Harvester yellow, and this is we figured this color because it's the most industrial out of all colors, and we don't want to be running around with a pink wheelbarrow or a red bright fire engine red wheelbarrow. Um, rather have an industrial tractor color um, and that's just my personal preference um, you can paint yours red white and blue or pink yellow and green doesn't matter um, the point is is that if I were doing this with a brush I would probably use implement paint on a brush in the belly itself and then maybe in some of the exterior and I'd buy the same can of spray paint implement spray paint in the same brand, the same exact color, and I would shake that well, and I would probably paint the brackets and all the small parts with the with the spray can, and I would save the big brush job uh, for the tub like this, and then I would probably spray some of my paint, my aerosol paint, over it so that it could self-level and wouldn't have uh, a rough texture finish from a brush. Uh, while it's trying to self-level. So in other words, I would help it self-level by spraying it again before it's dry with spray paint. Unfortunately, fortunately, I had a automotive paint gun and that's what I used to paint this with and a compressor. Pancake compressor. Yeah, we used a pancake compressor which, is, which doesn't have enough air volume uh, to, to keep up with the gun, but it did enough for these small parts. Um, and so that's where we are. And, uh, and what about our wheel right there? We're going to repaint that. <laughs> that is what this color was supposed to be. And this is what happens when you don't shake a rattle can enough to, or the rattle can goes bad. You get a pink color. So we're going to repaint it with a gun, a smaller gun, and we're going to paint it white. The IH Harvester white. So the wheel's red, rim's red now, that's an IH red, um, after a clogged paint gun. Several times. Yep. Next time, anybody, or first time anybody ever paints, make sure you use a paint filter to filter out your old paints, uh, otherwise you'll get a clog in the bottom of your spray gun if you're using one, and you'll regret it. So that's done, and we've decided and we're only 24 hours into this, by the way. Somehow we managed to flip these over half dry and work with this this way. And uh, cardboard and things like that we used. And we had the hardware up there painted already. And even though this is just a silly wheelbarrow and a, and a, and a replacement, um, I guess handles, handle replacements, Instead of carving out our own handles like we were going to do, I think we're just going to buy two handles, even though that it's a rip-off price. And what we're going to do to stop them from rotting in the future is take them and paint them with an implement paint. Seal them. After we wipe them down with wash thinner or xylene. Got it. So that we make the top coat tacky, <clears throat> which is probably like a urethane. Yeah. We'll, we'll wipe the urethane down and. <laughs> Paint them, especially after we drill the holes in them, because that's where they rot, where the holes are drilled. Oh yeah. We soak the pre-drill the holes and then soak the inside of the holes with with uh, 
extra thin IH white and implement paint white the whole handle so we paint the entire wooden handle white even the grip where you grab it that's a good idea that'll seal it in well especially where we drill it it'll stop the weather from withering it away like and this will stop rust well yeah sure it will um, the inside is already ready to uh, when it's all done and it's put together and everything's together the final step is to to uh, Flip it back upside down, have it ready to go, set it on the concrete, and paint the inside one more thick coat. Do you agree? Yes. Brush the bugs off with a dry brush, uh, which most of them we already got off, and it looks fine. But just because that's the load section, the traffic, the high traffic section. It's going to need the extra coat. So paint it with one extra coat while it's still clean, and the paint will still take a... Uh, it'll still take a paint job right right and then we sit let this thing sit for about a week because that's how long this kind of paint kind of takes to <laughs> at least a week yes it, even sprayed even thinned even hardened it still takes a week preferably probably let it sit in the sun and bake yeah and then it'll be stronger than it came from the store and Very strong. Uh, we just made a spectacle out of a wheelbarrow <laughs> I mean you got people on YouTube posting how to play video games and how, how to, uh, well, I'll say that. Some of y'all do some of that, but we got things that are the goofiest things in the world on how to do on the internet, so why not a wheelbarrow? <coughs> so we got some handles. Obviously was not worth it uh, buying $40 handles for a 250 to a 175 to a $250 wheelbarrow. However, Fort paying $19 a handle beats trying to make them ourselves, um, especially when they're made out of hardwood. So what can we do to make them a little bit more weatherproof? Well, first things first, the holes are not drilled. We barely have a template to go off of. The only thing we really have is where the front nose mounts to where the wheel mounts. But we don't have where the belly mounts because that's pretty much rotted off. We also discovered upon looking at this that Either it rotted off over time or someone assembled this wheelbarrow in the wrong way because they're supposed to be risers. Risers are obviously they take a longer screw, which I think is a five and a half inch bolt like this. Um, and this is about five and a half inches. So that tells me that, that once upon a time there was a riser on here, which is a wedge shaped piece of wood that rises up here and then gets narrow to the last bolt here so the riser would stop here and then sit flush against the belly of the uh, the wheelbarrow so the riser would rise up about an inch inch and a half maybe two inches depending on uh, the belly height whether you want it to sit level apparently this one had a riser going by pictures only um, if you look at the the uh, wooden handles that they sell you notice that I noticed that the riser on the from the pictures from the other one the other ones like this model assembled or newer versions of it have a riser on it with a roll steel belly like this one that rose up about almost as much as this so at least an inch and a half and then it slimmed down and tapered down to nothing which tells me that I need to, to measure from here to here and cut me a, a two identical risers where it raises up an inch and a half at least here and then tapers down here to accommodate this long bolt which comes through also I've noticed that there were gaskets at one point in time in the past that was supposed to be assembled with this that went on here that they put on the back side here obviously that was to smash against the wood riser and stop water cement concrete whatever you mix in here or whatever you use dirt dirty water from dripping through the other side onto your wood and rotting your wood so we're gonna have to improvise and get some kind of rubber grommet which we can have no problem digging around and finding a rubber grommet 
Um, this wood was called cottonwood. Cottonwood is from obviously some kind of cottonwood tree or something like that. Um, it's in a family of three different types of hardwoods. Um, oak is one of those woods. So we do have oak. So we will wind up using our oak after all to make our risers. So as I said, we'll start high here and then taper down and make it look uniform on the belly. And we also notice that we're mi missing some metal cross braces that after the handles are put on and the frame is, before the frame is bolted on, they go under. It's flat bar steel that goes across that supports it from racking this way and that way. So they, come, they go across this way. That wasn't even on this. That wasn't even on this particular wheelbarrow assembled. So someone took some shortcuts possibly and assembled this out of the box without it correctly being assembled. So we don't have those pieces of steel, but we do have flat bar, flat aluminum, and other types of various flat steel that we can make those cross braces with. So we got to drill all our holes first, like I said, and after we drill all our holes, then we can paint these uh, with an implement paint after we wipe them down with some xylene, uh, which is something that's used to, you know, strip varnish and paint and stuff like that, and help as a as a uh, degreaser. So we're going to strip strip these, wipe them down, get them tacky with xylene after we drill the holes, then paint them, and then. Uh, We'll paint the insides of the holes so that they're treated um, against weather. Oh, my face. So it looks like 7 and 10. It's your axle holes. For your axle holes from the end of the board. So you've already drilled your side holes. I drilled them already. And so 7 and 10. Oh, I'm sorry, seven and a half and ten looks like it's going to be your axle holes. Uh, axle shaft to hold your axle shaft in place. So seven and a half inches and that, ten. That's based on the other template you have here. Right, but we'll check that and make sure that those holes are far enough apart because this is what we had before two holes we were able to kind of manipulate where they go get a rough estimate about where they have marked at and as long as the two are the same you won't notice the difference if it's off an eighth of an inch these, hole, these holes we marked by putting that front plate on right kind of putting it to the but end. I like my front plate to sit tight Right. Every wheelbarrow I've ever ran across always has a jiggle in front plate that isn't on there as tight as it can be. Meaning pushed all the way up against the cap and tightened. Got it. You understand? So, so we're making it taut. Yes. On this side, this is inch and three quarter. And when you turn it this way, it's two inches. Right. And these are the new standard handles that they sell you. So obviously you're either going to put them on like this sideways or you're going to put them on long ways, and that's for strength. But when you're drilling a hole down the center of them, over here, particularly the back handle hole, is where it snaps when you pull up on it. Right. So are you, do you have enough to drill through and still have side side meat to hold strength for strength? I guess you would want to drill as small of a hole as possible. Yes. Yeah. For, so for 5 sixteenths, and we're drilling slightly bigger than 5 sixteenths to accommodate the bolt going through there and plenty of stuff Red. to get in a hole. So let's stay there for a minute. Let's check this and make sure. Here's one of the wheel brackets. Let's see if our holes line up, right? For 5 sixteenths to go through. And it looks like our holes kind of line up. Right? Kind of. Oh yeah, if you center both of them? If I center them both, then they line up, correct? Right. So what do you think the best option is? Set this center and draw an oval, right? Probably, yeah. And then from there, you draw in the center of that oval. Use your best judgment, because th these are adjustable. Yeah, if you get any of these measurements off, you'd have one handle forward versus the other. Correct. Have a dog walking. Single wheeled. All right, so wheelbarrow. 
obviously these handles will be like that and you can't have your plate like that right uh, true because your axle so you're going to be twisted ever so slightly like that and that's what these slot adjustments are for so that your axle is straight when you're V'd out like that and you got a front nose piece alright so uh, something in that realm make sense? yeah so you got your second one on there and that's what you're going to do again so like I said your rough, your rough end or your rough guesstimate is right around seven and a half to ten and so we're gonna draw our ovals and we'll go somewhere in the center of those We have to show you the 24 hour mark. Um, and this is in between working and, and doing other things. You know, uh, this is just a, a side project for fun. So we have the whole international scheme here. Um, all the parts, those will get touched up after they're put on. Um, we've got two cross braces that we, we talked about earlier that we're missing. We got the wedges that were made to to angle the handles at the right pitch, um, to push the bucket up taller. Um, what were they called again? Risers. Risers, there yeah. you go. So we made the risers out of oak beams, um, and they're painted international white. Uh, we, wiped, we wiped the handles down with xylene, and they soaked that paint right up, uh, made it nice and tacky, so we could uh, the paint would stick to it. We painted them with like three or four coats of international um, paint. So, looks like we got the whole scheme here. So, by tomorrow when we get off of work, we should be able to slap this thing together. We're going to turn this fan off tonight, call it a night, slap this thing together, and then that will be the final product. Okay. How about if we bring it over to the, to the customer that we removed it? when we were picking up all that debris. Get back to them. And just give it to them. We yeah. only got $40 invested in it. That'd be a surprise on their face. It's like to see a look on their face when they see this. Okay, well, we'll put it together and see how good it looks, how it operates, if it's presentable. And if it is, we'll think about doing that. All right, so here we are on day two. Next day. the almost finished product. Yeah, we just kind of threw it together to see how it would line up. And so, the only thing we have left to do now is put the axle on and the front support brackets. You can see we made these brackets last night real quick. And paint didn't even have time to fully dry. Uh, if I had to do it over again, or if I took shortcuts, it was not cutting these brackets flush grinding them down flush and then the front's pretty good so there's no snags there so that's the only drawback there and that's because I got in a rush and like I said I took these off the back of an old rotten dolly um, those were the cross braces in the back of an old dolly so, um, so we got those support braces and you can see our bolts our five and a half inch bolts up front accommodated for the thickness of the riser that we chose we actually went with an inch and three quarter right here at the top riser. Tapering down to nothing. Tapering down to zero. And we did that. Uh, first we marked out an inch and a half and it looked a little shallow to me. So I went with inch and a quarter, three quarter. And then when I tapered down, I noticed that uh, I guess our saw blade maybe took a little bit less than that off. So maybe a little less than an inch and three quarter for a riser. But our our studs came up about equal to our bolts. So that tells me that they accommodated the right bolts from the factory and that there were risers missing from this piece of equipment. And there were also these flat bars that were probably never installed yeah. from someone else's doing. Or maybe this was before they were able to do that. Because yeah, of how the uh, 
bolt went through, you would never lose that piece, even if the wood rotted off. Right, even if the wood rotted. And these were all attached. If y'all don't remember in the beginning of the video, we had to, well, you didn't see that part, but we had to undo all the bolts. But we didn't have any flat brackets to grind down and clean up and paint. So... We had to make that. Yeah, no big deal. I mean, it's just a flat bar, roughly a 16th inch thick. Uh, Not bad for custom made parts. Well, just that and just those pieces, but nothing else is really custom made, actually. No, not it's even the handles. It's just a restoration, and we're going to see how long it lasts. Um, of course, I can't post that on a video for I me. Mean, maybe I can come back in three years and say, hey, look, unless we give it to someone else, like, a, like we said earlier. Um, but we're going to do put it all together. The paint's still, it's dry, but it's not usable dry. Cured. It's not cured, but it's it's ha you can handle it. So uh, I'm still leery about it. So there's the axle through the housing, and we'll put a little grease on that later, and then slide it through, and then uh, bolt it together. And so you can see all our bolt holes lined up for the most part. There, there, and I, we took a chance here because we didn't have a reference from here to here to see what that reference, we didn't, we didn't know what that was going to be. What do we put that, 19? We put this at, at 18 three quarters. 19 from the end of the post. Okay. So your first belly, your first belly hole goes from the end of the post to 19 inches. And then we went from there to here, of course, measured center hole to center hole to make the belly bolt holes. Right. We never at any time put the wood up to the belly and drew a circle. So this is our own, and we freehanded drilled this, so we did not actually use a drill press. Or... Do it, use a drill press. So our drill could have been off at a slight, slight angle, and we don't know if it was off. But generally, if you hold still, a uh, person with a good eye can look down all, you know, at least three sides of the drill and tell that they're going straight. So we we took that chance freehanded. And we turn, it looks like we turned out, if those four belly holes lined up like that, and then we put O-rings on the back sides of them to stop water from leaking through the belly. Um, if those four bolts lined up in the pan, uh, that was a pretty successful drill, even if one of them's a little on the cockeyed side or whatever. Um, so far, I haven't seen that. And then if I had to do it again, the risers would probably be a little neater looking. Uh, instead of just where you can see an oak knot there and things like that. But I don't, but when's the last time we had a, a wheelbarrow uh, uh, show? Wheelbarrow piano? <laughs> yeah, we're not building a piano here. We're building something to work with. But anyway, here we go. We have the first uh, mock international uh, scheme colored wheelbarrow. The only thing it's missing is an I, like you said, an IH sticker right there. Uh, it actually would go on the side right here. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. One on each side. And if this was black and yellow, it would be the wall instead. Ah, uh, yeah. You're not going to show up on a job site with something like that. No. <laughs> Somebody would walk off with it. Yeah, unfortunately. Huh. One more clip of the whole thing. Yeah, inside. one more clip of the whole thing. And then, then that's the final thing. And you can finally get away from this video. Thank you all for watching. So let's see if it sits level. I know we're on unlevel ground, but let's keep going right here. Yeah, the belly sits level. The gnats love it. The gnats and flies love this fresh paint smell. Yeah. So. Oh yeah, don't mind the fact that the handle, one handle looks higher than the other. I think it's because it's on uneven ground. It is on a slope. It's, it doesn't feel that way when you pick it up. In fact, when you look at it, it's not. So there's going to need to be some touch-up painting here and there. We tighten some bolts here and there. But for the most part, it is a finished project. It is a finished project, and it is a wheelbarrow, so it's not that special. But if it dries and it gets nice and hard, it'll it'll be good for use yeah. for a long time. I mean, if somebody's a lot of people leave these out in the yard. And the handles get soaked with water. Right. And that's the problem. They rot. The handles rot. They go to pick it up one day and snap goes one handle every single time. Right. Now, I know they've solved that with some some uh, 
steel handles. Steel handles or alloy steel, but they bend those alloy steel handles and then they bend them back and then they break. Right, because once they bend, once they're done. Right, and you try to bend it back, it's weaker than it was ever before. And there's a certain amount of flex and feel to an authentic wooden handle on a wheelbarrow uh, if you grew up with one. There's an there's a authentic feel to it. So I decided to do that because this is not really that heavy of a duty wheelbarrow. It's pretty light duty, pretty standard. For 1980, this is standard. This is what everybody used in the 1980s. Now, nowadays, they're a lighter duty than this. Nowadays, they want to sell you all these special features and stuff, and they have these wheelbarrows, and you can add a second wheel on and all kinds of stuff. I know most of them don't have the rolled steel anymore No. on the sides. So we'll touch up where it was sitting here and there and these areas after this paint starts to cure a little bit. It's not a big concern, um, but the most part, it is all one color. It is not rusty, and most of all, it is functional. And that's the most important part. Can we use it? Can someone else use it? Yes.